And perhaps this is why the Lord redirected me this morning to this little, I asked Clifton not to try to follow me with words, but just to put a worshiper up there. <laughs> so we have like a worshiper. I just want you to focus on him because I know you'll follow me fine as we just sing these songs. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name. I sing praises to your name, oh Lord, praises to your name, oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Praises to your name, oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. I will sing. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord with my mouth. Will I make I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise with the heart of thanksgiving I will bless the old Lord I will bless the old Lord I will bless the old Lord with the heart of thanksgiving Bless the old Lord with my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise with the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless the old Lord. Bless the Oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul 
that is within me, bless his holy name. Oh, God is so good. Yes, he is. God is so good. Don't you know it now? God is so good, he's so good to me, and I, I love him so, I love him so, I really do. prayer God answers prayer he really does oh God answers prayer don't you know God answers prayer he's so good to me come on now bless the Lord my soul and all that is within me bless his holy day oh bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me Great. Oh, he is doing great things. He is doing great things. He is doing great things. Bless his holy name. The glory and honor to you, Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever is and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like ever before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. I worship your holy name. And his name is Jesus. Jesus. Holy and anointed one. Jesus.
risen and exalted, risen and exalted one, Jesus, holy and anointed. Father, we exalt you above all. Jesus, you are Lord of all, King of kings. And you have said we could come into your house and that you would show up in your presence whenever we meet together. And we're meeting together around your word, so you're here. And we exalt your name. We thank you and we praise you. Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, the one that's closer than a brother. He's close as our breath. Today we exalt you. Today we honor you. Today we accept your presence as a gift unto yes. us. And we bow before you in our hearts. Yes. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Father, and we, we love, love you, Jesus. Holy Spirit. We yes, thank you that the do. Holy Spirit is ever present Hallelujah. inside of us, ever the voice we hear saying, go left, go right, stop, go. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we honor you today. We honor you. This house, yes. these people, your people honor you today. Amen. We honor you above all. Yes, we do. And we welcome your presence to fill this house and fill our hearts yes. with your great love. We stand on Romans 5.5. 5. The love of God is shed abroad in our Amen. hearts by the Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you. Yes. In this presence, we thank you. Yes. <laughs> well, we'll just, we'll just have a, a run at that, and all of us can compete to see who is the gladdest. Amen. 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 It, it's good to have Charlie with us today. Thank you, Charlie, for being here, and uh, you're welcome anytime. Please know that. I'm going to, <clears throat> I'm going to talk today about something that... Uh, I think it's very important to our church and its success. As a matter of fact, what I want to talk about is important to the success of any church. If, if we're not reproducing children of faith through our efforts in the church, then we're not growing. We're not doing everything that God may be wanting us to do. So, I start out by saying we should all have children of faith. Paul had a son in the faith. His name was Timothy. He was very proud of him and loved him dearly. In 2 Timothy 1-2, he called him a beloved son. Paul cared for him cared for him as a person, 
cared for him as a believer, a Christian. He cared for him as a fellow minister in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here are some of the admonitions that he gave to him which prove what I'm saying. Let me see where I've got this from. Uh, I think it's, okay, it's in, it's in one of the epistles to Timothy, where he says, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself. That's a good word for all of us. Say it with me. Take heed to yourself. And to the doctrine, continue in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. I read all those other verses to get to the last line of verse 16. Continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 9, Paul provides great clarity about his ministry and how he he was carrying it out. I want to read that too so we can grasp the apostle's approach to how he birthed sons and daughters into the kingdom of God. Starting in verse 19 of chapter 9, 1 Corinthians, it says, For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win the more. And to the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, as without law, not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak, I became as weak that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men that by all means I might save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. Paul was not divorcing himself from what he was preaching to the people. He embraced it. Because he expected them to. In this address of the Apostle Paul to the church at Corinth, he is making clear the need to serve all people everywhere with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you what I think that means for you and me. First, I think it means we are all responsible for the distribution of the good news to everyone we can share it with. It's too good to sit on it. You didn't hear me. It's too good to sit on it. The good news is too good to hoard it. It's good news. You get up and read the paper in the morning, see how much good news is in there. You read this, there's good news all over it. We are responsible, all responsible for the distribution of the good news. In word, in deed, through praying for others to be saved and being bold in our witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. If we do not share this good news with the people who are part of our lives, we not only miss opportunity, we forsake Christian responsibility. 
you can groan all you want to, but I'm going to read that one again. If we do not share this good news with the people who are part of our lives, we are not only missing opportunity, we are forsaking responsibility. I'm going to read this passage from the contemporary English version that I already read to you. I confess I have a habit of comparing different versions of the Scripture to gain better understanding. I'm always anchored in my New King James presentation, and I'll even go back to the King James if I have a doubt. I want my spiritual feet to be grounded, but let's read this in the uh, contemporary English version. Paul said, I'm not anyone's slave. But I have become a slave to everyone so I can win as many people as possible. When I'm with the Jews, I live like a Jew to win Jews. They are ruled by the law of Moses and I am not, but I live by the law to win them. How was Paul ruled? He was ruled by the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I'm with people who are not ruled by the law, I forget about the law to win them. Of course, I never really forget about the law of God. In fact, I am ruled by the law of Christ. When I am with people whose faith is weak, I live as they do to win them. I do everything I can to win everyone I possibly can. I do all this for the good news because I want to share in its blessings. You know that many runners enter a race and only one of them wins the prize. So, run to win. You know, I read that in this translation and I thought, too many people are running to lose. Run to win. Athletes work hard to win a crown that cannot last But we do it for a crown that will last forever. I don't run without a goal, and I don't box by beating my fist in the air. I keep my body under control and make it my slave so I won't lose out after telling the good news to others. And just in case you missed it, what he really means about that is I take care of myself so that I'm a good example and witness for Christ Jesus. I take care of myself so that I'm a good example and good witness for Christ Jesus. Three times is the charm. I take care of myself because I want to be a good witness and not a detraction to Christ. We got it. First thing I want to say to you is that a slave does whatever his or her master says. Paul said, I'm a slave of Christ. A slave does whatever his or her master says. I'm reading a series of books right now that has in it some slaves. It's a book centered on, it's a book, series of books centered on a part of it, World War, uh, World War. <laughs> the Civil War, and what happened in the Civil War to set slaves free. People who were literally bought and sold and retained as slaves, they were set free in America. Thank God for the Civil War. Thank God for the Civil War. People should not be enslaved to other people. God didn't create us for that to happen to us. A slave does whatever his or her master says. Not not anyone's slave, but a slave to everyone. I want you to know that. I'm not just anyone's slave. I'm a slave to everyone. Because I love Christ. Because I want to do His will and His work. What Paul is saying here is that he is bound by Christ to win every person for Christ that he can. That is exactly what he's saying. In addition, he adapts himself to them 
for the purpose of winning them to Christ because he cares. To the Jews, he was a Jew. To the Gentile, he was a Gentile. To the weak, he was weak. To the strong, he was strong. He became whatever he had to be. He adapted himself to win people who needed to be won to Christ. Second point I want to make about this is that he did it for the gospel's sake. People needed to be saved. And it was for people. But it was this blessed gospel that Paul not only wrote a lot of, but gave his life to fulfilling its principles through the choices he made and the things he did. For the gospel's sake. And like like we all used to, for Pete's sake. I don't know who Pete is, but he's, he's took a lot of abuse over the years. <laughs> is it really good news to you, this gospel of Jesus Christ? Is it really good news? It is good news. Some people can't wait to share gossip, but I'm telling you, this ain't gossip. It is the gospel. This news needs to have reached every person who has ever lived. Every person who is still alive today, every person who will ever live on the face of this earth needs to be reached by the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the only thing that will get you out of this world alive. It is news of eternal value and it brings peace on earth and goodwill to men. And women. We share this gospel that we might win some and participate in the greatest work the world will ever witness. The point of the gospel is not to leave it at home, but to take it with you wherever you go. It's good news. Run your race to win the lost for Christ. Run your race knowing that you present yourself and people see you and they're impressed. And not only that, many of them are convicted by the presentation you make of your faith through the way you choose to live your life. Compete for the prize of souls saved for eternity. We're not just saved for a while. We're here on this earth and that's it. We're gone. There is a place where all of us are going. I hope most all of us in this room are going to heaven when we die. But there are people in the world who are still going to hell because they haven't changed their mind nor accepted Christ into their heart as the Savior and the Lord. Compete. Compete for the salvation of their souls. Contest with the devil to turn loose of them and let them go. Some of them live in your house. Some of them are close to you. And they need to be saved. And God is depending on you and me to pray the prayer of faith and live the life of faith that will not only witness to them, but change their lives. The the discipline of personal faith in you and in me is the hook and the bait that will catch the eye of the sinner and bring him or her to a decision for Christ. Pastor, I never heard it like that before. Well, I need to say it one more time. The discipline of personal faith, that is, living out what we know is in this book. Taking it seriously enough to change our lives, alter the way we live, so that we live by what is here. And 
I, I feel impressed to tell you it starts in Genesis and it ends in Revelation. Well, that's the Old Testament. <laughs> you need the old one too. You need the old one too. Your personal faith and its manifestation through your life is the hook and bait that will catch the eye of the sinner and bring him or her to a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you know people are watching your life? When they find out you are a believer, they watch you. They watch you. Say, well, I don't know how true that is, Pastor. Well, don't do anything wrong lest they be watching you. Don't do <laughs> Okay, I won't go there. Because like Forrest Gump says, stupid is as stupid does. <laughs> Mama said. Okay, I'm getting down close to the end. You can breathe a sigh of relief. But I got to tell you, compete for the prize. In this race, everybody wins. Some cross the finish line ahead of others. Some get started on the journey sooner than others. But everybody wins. Everybody wins. All that has to be done is cross the finish line. Just cross the finish line. We need the conviction that just just because we received Christ, that's not enough. We need to do something for Him, for the kingdom He has invited us into. We need to launch a rescue effort for our families, our neighbors, our co-workers, our friends. An old song says, go out and win. Rescue from sin, days almost done, low sinks the sun, souls are dying, men are crying, win the lost at any cost. What would you give in exchange for your soul? That question is not original with me. It's in here. What would you give in exchange for your soul? Jesus gave his life for yours and for mine. Well, we know that, Pastor. Sure you do. But what about your near neighbor? What about your coworker? What about your mother, your father, your husband, your wife, your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister? What about them? Do they know? Do they know Jesus gave his life for them? And have they believed upon him for the salvation of their souls? Praying. I've underlined that word praying. Because I'm going to tell you this is the most important thing you're going to do for a sinner. Is pray for them. Sometimes talking to them is the wrong thing because they don't have the right mindset about us. But when you pray for them, when you pray for them, really pray for them, God gets engaged in the process. Pray for them to be saved. Praying is a rescue strategy. I like that phrase. Praying is a rescue strategy. And then, then there's another thing. Living your biblical faith before them is a clear pathway for them to see how to be saved. It also is a rescue strategy. Live your faith before them. Live the faith before them that you know about in this book. Don't make things up as you go along. Read them in here and apply them to your life. If you don't understand what's in here, talk to Sharon. She can inform you. 
and I'll help her. Pray for them. Live your faith before them. That's not all you need to do. You need to love them unconditionally. Because unconditional love is the hook in the jaw that reels them in. So three things. Pray for them. Live your faith before them. And love them unconditionally. They do wrong. They mess up. It's okay. God still loves them. And you need to love them too. You need to pray for them more than ever when that happens. Remember stories my mom told me about my dad before he got saved. And what she said, I know, I didn't know it because I wasn't even alive yet. But he was a rascal. There's no other way to put it. He was just plain, simply a rascal. (laughs) You know, sometimes it's, sometimes you don't want to talk about your family very much. But it's okay, because God changed my dad's life when my dad surrendered to him. Speaking truth into their hearing any way you can is a pathway to their conscience and their power to reason. Don't be shy, and I'll tell you why. Eternity is at stake. Their eternal future is at stake. Don't be shy. You be sure that you take care to live the faith before your family and your friends, especially if they don't know Christ. Well, you do it all the time. You know, we shouldn't shouldn't take exception because we're with believers and we can kind of, you know, let it go, let our hair down. Don't do that. Don't do that. I thought of a nursery rhyme that I remembered It says this, there was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth with plenty of bread. She kissed them all fondly and sent them to bed. Y'all didn't hear it that way? Wouldn't, wouldn't, Wouldn't it be wonderful? Well, first of all, let me read this. The original rhyme had a different line at the end than this one that I just read. She kissed them all fondly and sent them to bed. It said, she whipped them all soundly and put them to bed. (laughs) Well, I like the other one better. She kissed them all fondly and sent them to bed. Sometimes children do need bliss, discipline. And we're all God's kids. And yeah, we need discipline sometimes. I don't doubt but what he hasn't been disciplining me for a while now. You know, when you don't reel your appetite in and you do things to your body you shouldn't do, you're going to suffer. But I'm thankful for his healing grace. I'm thankful for getting better. I believe that one day I'll be standing up here preaching and I might sail off this, well, I don't know about that. but (laughs) We're God's children and we need discipline. We need discipline of the Lord in matters of faith because it's the only way we can be effective in our witness to others. God knows the truth whether we, if we forget it, he'll remind us. He'll remind us. We need to be effective in our witness to others by opening the door of the gospel to them simply through the way we choose to live our own lives. It, it's not hard to love other people. I know we have issues with some folks and we say, well, I just don't know. I don't know if I can love that person or not. Well, look, look to Jesus because he could love all of us even from the cross. 
I hope you don't miss that. He could love all of us, even from the cross, where he allowed himself to be nailed. There's a cross for you, there's a cross for me. And you just go ahead and stretch out on it, because God will use you just like he used his son to influence others to believe upon him, Jesus Christ, and be saved. If we don't take responsibility for this matter of people being saved, who will? Who will? And I'm going to go back and tell you the place where you start. You start by praying for them. You figure out your list this week. Don't write out 502 names. Don't do that. Start with your close family if they're not saved. You start praying for them starting today. Before you go to bed tonight, you pray, Lord, save. Save Timmy, save John, save Jill. Whoever it is, call their name out to God. Pray, pray. And then live your faith before them every time you're around them. Don't shy away from talking about the goodness of God. Don't shy away. From speaking of him who has made such a great difference in your own life. If you live your faith before them, it has a greater chance of influencing them. And then love them unconditionally. Because you know what? I, I, know, I know people whose family just rejects and rejects and rejects. They, they tell them about Jesus. They pray for them. They tell the, the, the brother, the sister, the parent, the child, they are praying for them. And, you know, they just get all worked up. Why are you praying for me? Leave me alone. Let me be. And you just have to say, no, nope, I'm going to pray for you anyway. And you know, sometimes you feel like saying, you can like it or lump it, but I'm praying for you. <laughs> Just understand, I'm praying for you. And I guarantee you, the day will come. The day will come when they will appreciate the fact that you have prayed for them. They will appreciate it. Now, I could ramble on a little bit more, but I know I'm done. So, I, won't, I, won't, I can't stand because my cane's down here on the floor, but you can stand. I, I just feel like if you, if you feel like you could come down toward the front here and stand down here, I'd like for us to join hands together in a prayer this morning as we dismiss. Yeah, I won't. Wow, it's snowing up here, isn't it? Father, we are so grateful for this day, for your love and grace that sustains and keeps us every day. Thank you, Jesus, that you have saved our souls. We give you praise and honor the name of Jesus Christ and the power of salvation that he's brought to us. Help us to impart that to others starting today, Lord, and this week as opportunity presents itself. Help us, Lord, to love people enough to share the good news with them and to bless their lives. Father God, I pray that you will put love in our hearts so strong that we cannot resist, so powerful that we cannot overcome, so real that we see it so clearly we can articulate it and share it with others. 
I pray in Jesus' name that you would raise us up at Covenant Life Church to be a soul-saving people and house. In the name of Jesus, we pray the power of the Holy Spirit will go before us and that He will work in us when we get to where He wants us to go to know what we need to do and just who we need to speak to. Father God, I'm praying and believing that this is going to happen this week starting today with each of us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, Lord, that we will come in the very next service bringing those with us whose lives you have touched and saved and transformed because of our prayers and our own faith that we are living out there in the world. In the name of Jesus, Father, hear our prayers now and bless us as we go in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said together, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. Fellowship with one another before you go and just a second before you get going.